now as the floodgates have been opened PSP games are now playable on your iPhone yes you could do it using other methods like you know gel breaking or side loading for example but now you can go into the App Store download the PPSS PP emulator and play PSP games there's no bio setup you just get the ROMs obviously uh, you know uh, you know gotta put it out there this video is for educational purposes i am not condoning piracy make sure you own the console uh, make sure you own the games that you are playing that you ripped them appropriately etc 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 all out of the stuff however you get them your choice but in terms of the emulator it's on the app store now so it's actually a pretty easy setup i'm gonna switch over to my iPhone and show you how to actually set it up. Very simple. Okay, so now let's set up the PPSSPP emulator. First thing you wanna do is go to your app store. Next, you wanna hit the search, the, you hit search in the bottom right. And then from that, you open it up. If it's already on the screen, you can just click the search field on top. And you wanna search for PPSSPP and it is the one by Henrik Reed God. There is a gold version. The gold version, as far as I'm aware, correct me if I'm wrong, is the same, it supports the developers. So if you want to support the developers, get the you know paid version, it's only a fiver. But again, it, as far as I'm aware, it is the same in terms of what it provides in terms of feature set and compatibility. Now you'll click the download button. Mine has a cloud icon instead of you know install or download, just because I've already downloaded it, but you just press that. And it's pretty crazy because it's in the top charts in the developer section. You know, why in developer? Uh, you know, if I can get some wrongly categorized, probably should be more in game or entertainment, but it's ahead of stuff like GitHub and Teflite, which is pretty insane. Now just go back, you wanna search for zip, and you'll need some sort of tool to unzip your ROMs. It depends, that actually depends on how you've got your ROMs, you know, what format they're in. You're obviously needing ISO or CSO, the compressed version of ISO. However, if it's in some sort of zip file and it's not a regular zip like it's .7z, the built-in file manager on iOS as of now, you know, can't handle those files. So I'll use files just to navigate the directories and, you know, move files around. I think that's better than the alternatives, but you'll need something to be able to, you know, unzip stuff. So iZip is the one that I am going to be using. So just click the download icon, start downloading, and it literally takes a moment. So you don't have to wait too long. But if I go to files, and if we go back, go back, and you can just click browse for this in the bottom right. Click on my iPhone, and I've downloaded you know the game using Chrome. That's a, you know how I've you know retrieved it, and so it's in there wherever it is, just located. Mine's a dot seven Z. It doesn't know how to process it. It's Crash Tag Team Racing. So what you want to do is open up iZip and click consent. Okay, from here you want to go to yeah, you can click allow. Go to document browser, and again. If you click browse, go to on my iPhone, Chrome, or wherever it is, or recents as well, recents helps. Click your file, so it's this particular one right here. Do you want to import, because you have to import it. So you can delete it afterwards, because it takes up space. Click yes, and it'll open, it'll say, would you like to unzip all files? You click okay. You just have to wait patiently, you say, please wait, it's just unzipping the file. So this game unzipped is 1.4 gigabytes. As a result, it's going to take a bit of time to unzip. It's not too long, if I'm being honest, but it will take a bit of time. And there's no progress bar, which is what I don't like about this, you know, particular unzipping tool. I might actually look at an alternative one, but there you go. You know, it's done now. So you went back, you know, went into the files. So if I click back, there it is. And if I go back again, if I go to files. So first of all, it copied the .7z file over the zip the zipped file so you this can handle raw files as well so you're all good to go so it copies that over that's the first thing it does to its storage um that this particular application has then it creates the folder once it's unzipped in there you have an iso you might have cso that's fine okay so what you want to do now is actually go out of this application go to files if i go back and on my iphone 
first of all, you want to go to the PPSSPP folder. It doesn't exist because you need to launch your PPSSPP. So I launched it up, I closed it down. The reason I haven't shown it is because it actually ends the recording on my you know, setup because it goes into landscape mode. But again, you won't have you know this issue. So just launch PPSSPP. You don't need to do anything. We ask you to accept some stuff, you know, do that, then close it down. And now what you want to do is go back to files. I will show it, you know, at the end, you know, it running. So go to files. In there, as you can see, in the on my iPhone, you have PPSSPP. In here, you can have a look there, you know, your you know, your save data, etc. here. But here, what you want to do is create a new folder. So click the three dots in the top right. You want to go to new folder. You want to name this ROMs. I'm going to have it all capitalized. And this is where you're going to be putting all your games. So click the browse in the bottom right again. You want to go to on my iPhone. Go to, you know, where you have it it's in iZip. Then you want to go to the folder. Then you want to keep the ISO or CSO pressed. This pops up. You want to click copy. You can move it if you want to. So just go back to browse. You want to go to on my iPhone again, PPSSPP. And in ROMs, you want to just, I find it works best if you just keep, you know, the folder is empty or you're not actually anywhere. You want to keep the screen pressed. This pops up, you click paste. It copies it over. It's really fast because obviously it's solid state storage. You know, it's, you know, flash memory is, you know, almost instantaneous. So now that's done, what you can do as an extra step so you don't have to, you know, so you don't use a lot of your disk space up on your phone, go to iZip and just literally keep it pressed, click delete, do that for both files. Because between the two, that was about two gigabytes. You don't want to be doing that. Like you do that 20 times, that's 40 gig right there. You don't want to be saving, wasting space on that. Okay, so that's done. We can close this down. We're all done with this initial setup. So what I'm going to do now is open up PPSSPP. So now that PPSSPP has now launched, uh, here you might see you got the PSP folder and there's nothing else. If you click the refresh button, the ROMs appears. It might automatically appear. Uh, if it doesn't, if it's like a fresh, you know, you know, boot up, then it will. Mine was already in the background, so you just needed to be reloaded. Before we do anything else, let's go to settings. Let me show you around. So in backend, right now, there's only open gels, nothing else. Rendering resolution, feel free to up it. Right now, by default, it is 2x. And uh, you can slowly up it depending on your game and experiment. You don't want to do software rendering, pretty much never want to do that, except for compatibility, but I find it you're pretty much good to go with, with virtually any game you will probably want to play on in the, the emulator. Again, speed hacks, Feel free to experiment. Most of it you do not need to mess around with. Uh, again, I'm just trying to show you the things that you'll need to deal with. Anisotropic filtering, you can leave that on max. That just helps with obscure angles and the blurriness of textures. And you can you can do cardboard VR if you want, if that's you know, if that's your jam. Camera device, front or back, which is cool that you can emulate the camera. I know certain games did have very few, but certain games did have that feature. And from here, you can show the FPS, show speed, show battery. If you want to do that on an overlay, then in controls, you click control mapping. You can add controls, you know, here. It has on-screen control. I'll have a separate video covering how to actually connect a controller to your iPhone, like Xbox, like PlayStation. I'm going to have all that good setup, you know, you know, very, very soon. You know, most of the rest of the stuff, you can just, you know, you know, you know, just for now, just ignore like on screen touch controls. You can disable them, you will need them unless you have a controller, you know, connected. If you have a controller connected, then you know, I would most likely disable them. And that's it in audio. Make sure enable sound is enabled because I remember a few years ago when I was setting up PPSSPP just on my computer. It wasn't enabled by default, so just bear that in my network. And again, you can leave this, and I will create a separate video covering this for specific games. Then there's you know some tools about save data, etc., and system information. Because by default, it will be on like the PSP 2000, and you know that's what you want. Okay, from here, that's that's it. We you know we are all set up to go. You go to 
ROMs, your game will appear right here. If you click the load button, it will literally launch up your sort of, you know, files, you know, manager. So you can navigate somewhere else, but I like to keep it all organized. So if I click ROMs, click Crash Tag Team Racing, and here we go. And right now, there's no on-screen controls. If I tap the screen, the on-screen controls appear. So something to bear in mind, if you're not hearing any audio, make sure that your phone is not, you know, in vibrate mode. You want to put it in ring. And then from that, you will be able to hear audio. I'm recording, so you can't hear it right now. But again, that's just a little, you know, tip for you guys. And if I click start and I click X, you know, I will, I'll click done and I'll have a little race, but we are all set up to go. It's crazy how simple it is. And the fact that you can get it from the app store now, uh, that is just, whoa. Cause I've already created a video on using the Delta emulator for Nintendo games. And now uh, this will PSP, we'll soon have PlayStation 1, probably PS2. You know, there's a lot of amazing stuff, you know, coming up. Here we go. We have it now running. Pretty crazy and it runs really, really smooth. And you know, the crispness on the iPhone is amazing. I've got an iPhone 15 Pro Max, so obviously, you know, it runs really, really smooth and it looks really nice. Again, you can, you know, up the rendering resolution. It's been ages since I played this game. I might, you know, you know go through it sometime. Yep, okay, so the only one last thing I wanna show you, at the top, you might notice there's like a up arrow. That's like the only thing that'll be sort of alien to you if you know the layout of a PSP, you know, system, the controls. If you click that, it brings up the menu. So you can save state. So if I click save, now the state has been saved. You can load it, but if I exit to menu and I'll load the game back up, and you know it's going through you know all of this but if i click the top and i click load state it takes me back to exactly where i was so i'm not reliant on the built-in saving mechanism of the game which is one of the main features that i love about emulators and then from here you can also create a game config as well uh, you know if there's a particular deleted but if there's a particular you know settings that you have so you can have it specific for the game and in display layout and effects but again from here you can go to settings and increase the rendering resolution so if i do 4x still seems to be running pretty darn good again i can go to settings and go to let's try 10x still pretty good actually obviously it's it's a very high powered device if this were playstation 2 it might be a different story uh, and if i just go back to 2x you can see definitely see the difference but depending on the game and the mo the time in the game you know what's going on you you know your results will vary so that's it that's how you set up the PPSS PP emulator on your ios device more videos coming soon like controller setup more emulator videos as the new emulators come out let me know what video you would like to see next in the comment section below if you like the video give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe and i'll see you in the next one bye bye